Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this is the second part of a two-part video series on using Lightroom's Develop module specifically for beginners. Now, there are two things we want to do. We want to do global changes. That's what we did in the last episode. In this episode, we're doing specific local changes. We're going to be changing things in specific areas of our image. Now, this video is for beginners. If you didn't see the last episode, make sure you watch that. And we're going to continue making an image go from drab to pretty fab. So let's take a look right now. There are five local adjustment tools in Lightroom Classic. There is the spot removal tool, the red eye removal tool, the graduated filter, radio filter, and adjustment brush. Now we're gonna work with all these except for the red eye tool. It's pretty straightforward. You can click on that and learn how to do it all on your own. We're gonna start by getting in here to the adjustment brush because understanding this is really gonna help us understand how all of these other tools work. Now these behave a little bit wonky when you first start using them. It might not make sense to you. So let's talk about how this works. So once you select a brush or a tool, you do that just by clicking on it, you'll see that this new panel shows up here. This panel is going to define what it is that you're doing to the local area on your image. And so what we want to do is we want to choose an effect. So we have all of these predefined effects here. I'm going to choose exposure. Then I'm going to double click effect because that's going to reset the exposure to zero. That's going to give me a nice brush with nothing at all happening. And then I'm going to take my exposure down to negative four. That's just going to help you see something that's happening on the screen. So what I'll do here is I'm going to get my brush. I can change the size of this brush by going down here and clicking, making this really large or really small. I can change the feather. That's how much the transition area is taking up. I can do that here or I can just use the mouse wheel. It makes it much, much easier. And then I can paint on to my image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint over this escalator here and I'm painting on an exposure of negative four. Now you can see that over here on the right, I can now edit this. I can take the exposure up or down in this area. I can make the contrast really high. I can make the saturation really high. I can do whatever I want just to this area that I've painted. If I want to see exactly where I've painted, this is true of all the brushes, I can hover over this little dot right here with my hand and it glows red. So where it's glowing red, that's showing where exactly that effect is. Because sometimes these effects are really subtle and so you might want to see that. Now let's say I want to do something different. So over here on Am's face, perhaps I want to, oh let's desaturate her face. What I need to do is get a brand new brush so that I don't have the same thing happening. Because if I paint right now the same thing, then I have two areas that are doing the same thing. So if I take the exposure down, notice these two things are connected. If I go up, these two things are connected. I don't want that. So what I want to do is have two separate things. So what I'll do here is I'm going to select this dot, this brush, hit the delete key. That is going to get rid of this thing that I just did. Now I'm going to get a new brush, make the exposure negative four, paint over this escalator over here. Then I'm going to go get a new brush. Then I'm going to choose exposure, make the exposure back to zero by double clicking the effect. And I'm going to take the saturation down to negative one here and just paint over Am's face. Now notice we have two separate areas. We have Am's face, I can see that by hovering over. We have this escalator over here, I can see that by hovering over. I can select which brush I'm using, which area that I'm uh, editing, by clicking on the dot. Notice these two things have dots. If I click over here on this first dot, I'll click on that. Notice I can do a few things. Now I can change this to positive or negative exposure. I can change the whites or blacks or clarity or anything else I want. I can also click and drag this to move this around. That's why you want to have two different areas. So each brush is going to do its own thing. If I want Am's face over here, I'll click on that. I'll reset the saturation and maybe I'll take the clarity down so that it looks a little bit um, like her skin doesn't have any details at all. So there's all kinds of things you can do with that. Just remember, each time you want to do something different, make sure you go get a new brush, reset that by double clicking effect, and then choose the thing you want to do. Like increase the contrast. Let's paint that in down here. So you can do whatever you want. It's really cool. 
if I want to get rid of one of these areas that I've painted, so let's say I want to get rid of this, uh, this paint that I did here, this clarity on Am's face, I click on the dot, notice it has a uh, dot inside the dot, and then I can just hit the delete key, get rid of that, or I can hit the reset button over here and that gets rid of every adjustment that I've made. So this is a global get rid of everything, click. So that's how these all work. So let's uh, give a practical example of this. So over here we have this area on the right hand side of the screen that's sort of bright. I want to fix that, but instead of painting this all in, I'm going to use a graduated filter. And then what I'll do here is the effect, I'm going to double click, take the exposure down by negative four so you can really see that. And I'm going to click and drag. And what I have here is I have one side of this center line where the effect is taking place. So this is a negative four exposure. And then these two lines on the outside of the center line show the beginning and the end of the transition. So this line here, we have the effect fully in force, so negative four exposure, and then it transitions to nothing over here. I can change things, so I can click and rotate this effect by getting the center line, and then I can just rotate that around that center dot. I can grab the dot, I can move this over, so now it lines up with that pole right there. I can change the transition area by selecting one of the outside lines and moving that farther or closer together. And then of course I can change how much of this is actually happening by using my sliders over on the right hand side. And you can see that we really quickly affected this large section over here. It works just great and it works just the exact same way that the, uh, the adjustment brush did. If you want to do this in a different place, click new, get a new brush and do it again. It works wonderful. So the radio filter, same exact thing. So I'll click on the radio filter here. I'm going to double click effect to reset everything. I'm going to take my exposure down by negative four just so you can see what's happening. And I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to move this over Am's face. Now notice that everything outside this circle, this oval, is a negative four. I don't want that. What I want is I want it to be the inside. So over here on the right side, there's an invert. So I can click invert here, and then exactly the opposite is happening. Now the inside of this filter is what's happening, not the outside. I can change the shape of the filter. I can rotate this around. I can elongate it. So anything that's sort of roundish, that's what this is for. So we wouldn't do this. Maybe what we would do is we would increase the exposure to make her face glow just a bit. Maybe I could lower the contrast whatever, but you can use this to sort of highlight different areas, and once it's where you want it to be, you can hit close, and there you go. It looks pretty cool. So we've changed different areas. Let's talk about this spot tool. The spot tool is wonderful. It is used to clean up spots that were created by dust on the sensor. That's one thing. The other thing you can do is you can clean up areas on a person's face or arm. You can do some skin retouching. So let's start by using this to clean up some sensor dust. So all I need to do is click on the spot removal tool. There are two options up here. There's clone and heal. You want to use heal 95% of the time. We'll show you the difference here in a little bit. But to use this, all you need to do is get the place that you want to clean up, this spot right here, click it. That's it. What's going to happen is Lightroom is going to choose a place that it thinks is similar as the source and take the texture from this and then heal it over this other area. So here's another dot, I'll click on that. That's gonna heal that just fine. You might have to do some adjustments. For example, if I click on this, what might happen is, oops, look at that. It took this really bright area to this dark area, and so it's obvious that we've done something. So I can click and drag that source area over to somewhere that looks similar. Now it's taking from here, putting here, and look, it is transparent. You can't really tell anything that's happened. It cleans it up just great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here. We're going to use this for some skin retouching. So I'm going to grab this spot removal tool here. I've got heel selected. I'm going to increase my brush size with my mouse wheel. I'm just going to click right over here on this little blemish. What we want to do is we want to have the source 
be very similar to the destination. So I'm going to click this, drag it down here. It looks wonderful. I'm going to move this up here, get a new spot removal tool, click on this little scar right here, click that. Make sure I choose some skin that looks very, very similar. That looks great. I'm going to make this very, very small. Click on this little beauty mark right here. I think that's going to work great. Okay. And you can see that one, two, three, all of those just went right away. So what is the difference between heal and clone? Well, clone takes the exact uh, source and sticks it to the destination. So what it will do is here, I'm, I'm going to click right between her eyes and then say, take this, her eyeball as the source. And notice it just takes this exact thing and plops it in right there. If I said heal, what it's going to do, it's also going to take this texture, but it's going to try to blend that in. So one of them is just doing an exact clone. The other one is going to take the texture and try to blend it with the luminosity underneath. So what we want to do is you want to try to take some skin that looks a little bit more similar to where we're trying to heal, and that'll work just fine. So that is how that works. If you want to get rid of that, again, hit the delete key. That goes away. You will close that. And voila, we are done. So we've made all of our local adjustments. We've made our global adjustments. I'm going to kick out the side panels here, hit Y, so we can see before and after. And look what we did. Normally, all of these adjustments would take us about two to three minutes, and we can make our differences in our images very, very quickly. It's really awesome, and that's all there is to it. Well, I hope you learned a few things from this two-part series on the Develop Module in Lightroom. If you'd like to take a deeper dive and learn a few more things about the Develop Module or Photoshop or photo editing, video editing, shooting photography or videography, make sure you take a look at the Adorama Learning Center. It's absolutely free. And more importantly, make sure you click the subscribe button. That way you don't miss a single episode from Adorama TV. We're covering all kinds of things in this YouTube channel. So make sure you click subscribe right now. It'll make you a happy person. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and I will see you next time.